Dear brothers and sisters, often we find ourselves being exposed for things that we would not want other people to know about us. And often we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hides things about us and we are horrified at the thought of those things ever coming out. And often we find that there are good deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever reason has chosen to make public or private a need for us to reflect on who we truly are as people. And one of the things about ta'deeb nafs raising the soul, tasqiyatun nafs this purification process, tarbiyatun nafs to raise the soul in a way that it develops the qualities that are most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and desirable characteristics and things that would make you more confident about that standing that you have in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. One of the things about that entire process is that it has to start off with you wanting to purify yourself and you wanting to be pleasing in the sight of your Lord, no matter what other people say about you. What that means is that if you know that you're doing that which is right, then it should not matter to you if other people do not think that you are doing that which is right. And if you feel like you are developing good qualities and other people might not recognize that it should not matter to you. And if other people tell you that you have certain good qualities that you know that you have not yet acquired, you still should not be swayed from your actual sincere pursuit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to develop those qualities so that you truly become deserving of them. Because on the day of judgment when we stand, we are free both from the praise of people and the criticism of people. You stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He knew you in this world and He knows you in the hereafter and He knew you before you even knew of yourself. Before you even had an identity in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. And when you stand in front of Him, it is all laid bare. Now when we look at the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions of the Messenger Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. We see in the companions this level of humility that though the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam attests to certain qualities that they had, they never stopped engaging in self-reflection. They never stopped being self-critical. They never felt that they were completely safe from falling into hypocrisy or falling into punishment. And one of the things that we have to find is this proper equilibrium where as critical as we are of the people, we are even more so critical of ourselves. Otherwise, we fall into complete hypocrisy. People that find time to critique others harshly, but do not take themselves to task. One of the beautiful things that was said about Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it's narrated by Urwa ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu, that people used to accept the critiques of Umar ibn Khattab because they knew that, it, that Umar anhu was harder on himself than he was on them. That's beautiful. They knew that as Umar anhu was to the people, he was more so on himself. And that it came from a place of humility and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than from a place of arrogance and trying to denigrate someone in public. But it's very easy at times to be very critical of others and to ignore oneself. The people who have the most mistakes are the ones who have the most time to talk about other people's mistakes. The people who themselves have the most sins, the most ugliness, find the most time to talk about other people's ugliness as a means of deflecting from their own, as a means of distracting from their own. Maybe to, to create a veil for themselves, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Maybe to create a veil for themselves, but whatever it is, people that find time to engage in other people's ugliness, likely are hiding a lot of ugliness themselves. And that's part of the problem. That people that engage often in this and this and that are often lacking this time to be self-critical. Hold yourselves accountable before you are held accountable by other than you, meaning by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Weigh yourselves before you are weighed on the day of judgment. Place yourselves in those scales before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you to task and places you in that mizan, places you in that scale. It's an authentic narration from Shaddad ibn Aws radiallahu ta'ala anhum. It's in Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba. He said that I used to hear Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu say, and it's a shocking dua considering what we know of this man, this strong, bold, courageous man. He said, I used to hear him say, Oh Allah, I am weak, so make me strong. And I'm harsh with people, 
So make me more lenient, make me more gentle with them. And I am stingy, so make me generous. But remember that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that the strong person is not the one who overcomes one in a, in, in a competition or in wrestling or in fighting, but the person who is strong is the one who is able to ma maintain his composure when he becomes angry. That's a person who's strong. Strength is composure. Strength is being able to maintain yourself. Do we ever find Umar wronging people despite his great strength? Despite the size, the sheer size of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, do you ever find him being unjust? Yet still, look at that level of self-critique. Oh Allah, I'm weak, so make me strong. And you know, often the things that we don't take ourselves to, ourselves to task for are the things that we're praised for. Umar's strength was praised. Who told Umar radiallahu ta'ala, I mean, what would make a man like Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu do this? His strength was praiseworthy. But Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu doesn't listen to the praise of people that celebrate his strength. To him, he aspires for more. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned that uh, a person should be layin, hayin, a person should be gentle and easygoing and someone that does not have a heavy overbearing presence with the people. So he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him more lenient, even though the Prophet sallallahu praised his strength praised his courage and that's what stopped him from being unjust that's what stopped him from hurting people that's what stopped his presence from being an unwelcomed presence you know subhanallah if you think about most people who are who, who are strict most people who are very critical people don't want to be around them people don't want to be around them but umar radiallahu anhu was a man that everyone wanted to be around because they knew that as he was engaging in bettering his society, he was exerting so much more in bettering himself He was more self-critical than he was of the people. And Umar anhu, for a man like that to say, Oh Allah, I am stingy. And you don't associate ever when you look at the biography of Umar ibn Khattab anhu, stinginess with his character. This is a man that almost died when his people suffered in Amr Ramada in the year of the plague because he refused to eat while his people were incapable of eating. He refused to be in a situation better off than the people. This was a man that always lived in difficult circumstances, that feared that his children had more entitlement than the other children of the ummah and would not allow his children to have luxuries that the rest of the ummah could not afford. But this is a man that still says to Allah, Oh Allah, I'm stingy. Make me more generous. Dear brothers and sisters, with the short time that we have, and seriously, there could be an entire book written on this dua from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. But when you pray to Allah, how much do you admit of yourself? Self-hatred is a problem. Despair is a problem. Self-critique is good. When you're willing to take yourself to task, it's good. And when you aspire, even though you may have the qualities that you're still aspiring for in dua, then you can only get better. Because the ceiling is the Prophet wasallam, and we're not gonna get there in our lifetimes. So you keep striving and striving and striving. And when someone seeks perfection and good qualities, then even when they've already attained what other people may deem perfection, it's not good enough for them because the standard that they set for themselves is the one that was set for them by the divine and not by people. It's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set for them. It's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed that he was capable of. So yes, Umar radiallahu anhu, the very reason why he was a man that was capable of being someone that could guide society was because he never shied away from guiding himself and his critiques were welcomed. You know, one of the things, very beautiful exchanges that took place when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, no one knows, no one knows people or no one knows Umar radiallahu anhu other than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi like Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But when Abu Bakr was contemplating appointing Umar as his successor, he took shura from the people. He consulted some of the great companions. And you know what Uthman said about Umar? Uthman not only praised him, but he said what the people know of him, as much as well as the people speak of him, and what the people know of him, he's even better in private than what his reputation says about him. That's beautiful. Uthman radiallahu anhu said, look, as much as people have praise for Umar, what people don't know of him, 
is even better than what they do know of him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our private lives even better than our public lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be more pleasing in his sight than we are in the sight of the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from hypocrisy. Allow us to engage in a self-criticism that would purify us and not one that would cause us to despair of his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us when we become deceived either by our own sight upon us or the sight of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being deluded or arrogant or prideful or self-righteous and instill in us humility and a quest for tawbah, a quest for forgiveness and repentance no matter what our circumstances may be. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.